Hey, this is Rob, and I'm starting a new series of videos about Fusion 360 uh, geared toward beginners. And the idea is not to teach you how to use Fusion 360 from scratch, but instead to get people right when they've got a little bit of experience and help them get some practice in, because that's really kind of the best way to learn this is by practicing. So if I think about the way that I learn new software or a new way of working, it's better if I can see sort of... Um, really small examples of a real world problem and um, and how to solve it. So that's my that's my goal here to try and avoid the you know four hour long twitch stream that you might find or something that goes from you know A to Z in in rote mechanical order. The idea instead is to just look at a uh, technical drawing and then figure out how to translate that into a Fusion 360 design. What I'm always telling my students is that Fusion isn't really the tool to sketch ideas. That should happen on paper. You should make paper sketches, cardboard models with hot glue, all of that stuff, and then get to a point when you're closer to actually wanting to realize this thing as a physical object, then, then move to Fusion 360. And so this idea of working from a measured drawing, a technical drawing, and trying to translate that to Fusion is actually like a really practical thing to, to know. The other thing I always show them is that learning to 3D model in Fusion really means having to get good at 2D sketching. And so most of what you'll see in these videos is sketching in 2D and how to make uh, fully constrained models um, using sketch constraints and sketch dimensions and uh, doing it in a way that follows the design intent. Now, I just threw out a bunch of terms and those will all come up as I go through these videos. So before I continue talking, I'm just gonna jump right into the first drawing. These come from a couple of books. Here they are. And uh, the orange book is a, has uh, drawings that are a lot more complex. I'm going to start out with easier ones and move to ones that are more complex. But because this is for beginners, I won't go into the really complicated ones that might take hours to complete. I'm going to try and keep these all really short. So here is the latch plate. And the first thing I'm going to do in Fusion, even though I know this is only a single part, I'm going to make a new component because that's just always what we do. And I will call it latch plate and then I'll start modeling and that's just in case this ever became a multi-part project I wouldn't have to go back and figure things out so uh, I'm gonna always create a new component to start I'm gonna create a sketch and I'll put it on the front work plane now this first uh, example is just you know it's just a 2d drawing it doesn't even have dimensions to it. it's not 3d but this is a good start for us so uh, how can I how can I make this happen? Let's see. Well, first of all, I'm noticing from the drawings, this is another thing you're going to get is how to read these drawings. I'm noticing a couple of things. One is that the dimensions look to be probably in inches. I'm looking at 0.93 and uh, 1.6 as, you know, that would be really small if it was millimeters. I suppose it could be centimeters, but I think it's probably inches. So I'm going to change my units to inches. And then... Um, the other thing is that this particular part has a symmetry line in the middle. So really, I think in this case, what I'm going to do is draw just the bottom half and then uh, mirror it to the other side. So um, again, it, this is actually related to this idea of design intent. That symmetry line tells me that it's important that these two sides are symmetrical. So rather than putting dimensions on the bottom half and dimensions on the top half, what I really want is to figure out the bottom half and make sure that the top and bottom are symmetrical. And that, that line there is telling me that that's important to the designer or to the design. Okay, so let me just start drawing. I'm going to start uh, over here and I'm going to make this line that goes across. Now I know it's 0.94 in the drawing. I'm not going to try and get it exactly right, but I'm going to just estimate. And that's what I'm going to do throughout here. I'm just going to kind of draw in a way that sort of looks like what's there. And uh, for this one, I'm going to hold down the button and make that curve. Uh, I can make this not straight. That's okay. I'll fix that later. And then I've got this line. Now I'm going to stop right here because these curves are going to be interesting. There are two different radius, radii, radii, I don't know, <laughs> there to, to deal with. So I think this is pretty close. I'm going to make a line here and hold down the button to get that um, curve and then make another line. So sufficiently messy I'm going to go back and use uh, constraints and dimensions to shape it up and make it look like the technical drawing so the first thing is um, I know that this is supposed to be uh, horizontal oh it already was okay so 
Um, these lines need to be tangent, so let me just click there, and uh, that looks okay. This line obviously was supposed to be vertical, so I'll do that. And that now isn't tangent, so let me click tangent here. So I'm just shaving it up a little bit, but really what I'm interested in is mostly dimensions. So I'll click sketch dimension here, and again, make sure this is actually 0.94. And this one, this says that this uh, angle is 135 degrees. This angle is 15 degrees. And I could probably start adding some of these other bigger dimensions. So the whole, the overall length is 6.3. And what happens sometimes in this kind of way that I end up um, you know, making a, a bad version of it first is that as you start entering dimensions, things can get really backwards. And so I'm kind of strategic about how I add the dimensions. Um, but it, you know, you can always undo and, and do a different dimension if things got wild. Okay, that's 1.6. And let me just move that over. Um, the so there are these two holes there are going to be four holes but of course I'm only making two because I'm trying to keep it symmetrical I can make those as circles that's okay uh, and in fact it's showing me that the um, this circle the center of this circle is also the center of this radius here on that fillet so let me um, just do this and I can hit escape and I'm gonna use D for dimension I'm gonna use the sh keyboard shortcuts as much as I can 0.56 is the oh that's that's the radius so let me fix that I can do 0.56 divided by 2 and uh, then there's another circle over here and I can kind of hover over this to make sure that it's vertical and I can even hover over this one and try and get it to land right where it belongs but what you'll notice is even if I do that it doesn't add constraints so it doesn't mean that it's going to stay like that so you can see I can still move it so I do need constraints there and this one is supposed to be vertical those two points are supposed to be vertical from each other so I'll add that and then also this and this should be horizontal vertical and see you can see I'm still in that horizontal vertical tool because I've got that um, that little glyph beside my cursor I'll hit escape to get out of there and I, what I want here is not uh, to call this 0.5 oh was that this is supposed to be 0.5 diameter 0.5 I'm looking in the upper left now it's diameter 0.5 so um, the the this doesn't have a dimension on it and neither does that one really what it what we're interested in is making sure that all the holes are the same so I'll use an equal uh, constraint there so they're both the same size and um, it looks like yeah so what we can do sometimes is kind of move things around to see how we can break it right so this actually it's keeping vertical here keeping horizontal there that looks correct this it has a radius of 0.56 and the distance from you know my symmetry line which is essentially there and this point here or this one there they should be horizontal from each other uh, that will be 1.5. Now, are they actually horizontal from each other? I'm not sure. Let me click these two points and do horizontal vertical. It's already uh, horizontal vertical, and I think that's because this little glyph here is saying that this and this are concentric with each other. So that means that this point and this point are, by definition, horizontal from each other. So it's interesting to see how some of these constraints actually. Um, there are different ways to do this, right? I could have started by saying those are horizontal from each other, uh, but in this case, it's it's definitely it's telling me that it's over constrained if I try and add that. Okay, what else? Uh, distance, whoops, D. The distance from here to here is going to be 0.6. Uh, what else? Uh, the distance from here to here is 0.8. The uh, radius of this is 0.25, and we're getting pretty close. Okay. Ah, the distance from here to here is 3.5. Okay, so, um, you know, I think at this point I'm going to try and... Yeah, I think, I think it's time to try and get those curves to work. So what I'll do is create an arc, and I'll do a three-point arc. 
And what that is, if I, if I hover, it'll tell me what it's looking for. Place the start point. So there's the start point, and then it's looking for the end point, which we'll just call it this, and, uh, and just basically give it something that looks kind of about like what the drawing shows. Now, there are a couple things here. First, this uh, point and this point are supposed to be horizontal from each other, so I'll highlight them both and then click horizontal. And I uh, think from here I can make my other arc and I'll do a three point arc again and I will say it goes from here to here and uh, I'll just make it you know incorrect but uh, if I click here there is my point and you can see in the drawing that this point is supposed to be whoops hold on let's deal with this one first so this this is a radius of 0.4 D, what's happening here? D, 0.4. And uh, I think this point and this point should be vertical from each other. Let's see if we can make that happen. This point and this point are vertical from each other. Okay. And these two should be tangent to each other. Okay. And uh, this point. You know, this, this, uh, well, let's see if we can fix this somehow. Um, let's fix this point to here. If I click on those two and say that those are coincident, uh, I see a lot of lines turn black all of a sudden. And that's because my whole drawing was able to float around. And by locking that to there, a lot of these things became fixed in place. What we're looking for is to get all of these lines to turn black. And that means it's fully constrained. Every, every dimension and every constraint that needs to be there is there. So I've got this 0.4 radius here. I've got these two vertical from each other. Those, so it's essentially a quarter circle. And this is the one that I need to fix still. Now, if I click on it, I can see this is the uh, center point. And really that center point should be way higher. It should be on the other half. So let's see, I think, um, what can we do here? What's the best way to do this? Well, let me just, um, Let's say we, there is a dimension on here that says the distance between here and there is point is 1.6. Let me see if I can make that happen. 1.6. And then it should be uh, vertical over this one. Let's see if that already is. Okay, it already is. And so well, I think we're there really, but uh, it's still not, it's not black. And so if I try and move this around, I can start to see why. And it looks like I shouldn't be able to move in that direction. I can't move up and down, but I can move left and right. So that means this point needs to be fixed somehow. And if I look on the drawing, it says that the distance between here and here is 3.3. And that's it. Everything has turned black. That means my, uh, my sketch is fully constrained. Perfect. So uh, I could mirror this in the uh, sketch environment, but that is not really a best practice. Usually, if you're making a 3D model, you'll do this, uh, do sketch out the half of it here, and then finish the sketch. And uh, after extruding it, I would mirror the extruded part. So let's do that. I'll just click here and hit E for extrude. And there is no dimension here because it's just, you know, this is just a 2D drawing, but let's say it was 0.2 inches. And then what I can do is create a mirror. I can select this body and choose this top plane here or you know the best thing to do you can always choose a face of a model or something but if you're able to the best thing to do is always to choose one of those uh, main construction planes that that are set up so I'll choose that and it says join as the default so I'll end up with one body not two separate ones I'll hit OK and that's it.